VMware's vSphere 5.5 comes with the ability to create some really cool link aggregation groups on a distributed switch using a multitude of hashing algorithms that rely on LACP. So we're able to form dynamic port channels between your host and whatever physical switch that it's plumbed into. Let's walk through that process. It's pretty simple, but there's some various steps that you have to learn, and pretty much all of this is new in 5.5. If you've made a port channel or an ether channel using 5.1 or earlier, you'll notice that this process is drastically different. So to begin, I'm going to assume that you don't have a distributed switch. If you do, you can skip this part. So we're actually, I've got a demo folder inside of my networking container here. And I'm just going to create a new distributed switch from scratch. And we'll call it, I'm not going to be very creative, we'll call it VDS-LACP to denote that this is the distributed switch that I'm forming LACP port channels on. You can call it whatever you like. The name really doesn't matter. Now this is important if you want to do the new enhanced LACP support, which is a feature provided with the distributed switch 5.5. Every host that will be attaching to the switch has to be running ESXi 5.5 or later. And your vCenter obviously needs to be 5.5 or later as well, or else you won't even see this option. So go ahead and select 5.5 and click Next. Now we can choose the amount of uplinks that will be available for the switch, just like you normally would. Nothing changes here. I have two available. And I'm going to make a default port group, but I'm not going to call it D port group because that's kind of silly, right? Let's call it something a little more descriptive. We'll call it the production VMs. Maybe that's where you put your production VMs. In fact, I'll say uh, on VLAN 105. There we go. It's a semi-descriptive port group name that gives me a little bit of a clue as to what's going on. Again, call it whatever you want that makes sense for your environment. Click Next. You'll review to make sure that it's not going to explode on your face. And as long as it looks like this, you can click Finish, and you're good to go. At this point, the wizard is going to do his wizardry and create a distributed switch for you. And we'll go ahead and expand this and see if it's done that. No, it's still working. Okay, now that the switch has been created, let's select it and actually build a link aggregation group. So I'm going to go to the Manage tab for this switch, and then you'd want to click Settings, which happens to be already clicked, and then LACP, which is the Link Aggregation Control Protocol. And it's what we're going to use to build the link aggregation group so that we can form a port channel between our hosts that are running ESXi and the physical switches that they're plumbed into using their network adapters. So even though we don't have any hosts on this switch yet, I want to go ahead and create the lag so that it's available when we go to add a host to the switch. We're going to click on the green little plus sign here that lets you create new link aggregation groups or lags. Click plus there. And we're going to answer a little bit of a wizard here. So the name, I'm going to call it the SpongeBob 01 link aggregation group. It doesn't really matter what you call it. And in a work environment, SpongeBob may be a questionable name for it. We're going to make this port channel consume two different uplinks or two different ports. And two is the minimum. Obviously, you can't have a group of links unless you have two or more. I'm going to change the mode from passive to active. And all that really means is that we're going to actively seek out the other end of our interfaces. So we're going to advertise the fact that we want to form a port channel with the other side of the equation, the physical switch that we're connected to. If we chose passive, then we would be relying on the physical switch that we're plugged into to do those advertisements. I typically like to have both sides active just as a fail-safe to make sure that either the virtual switch or the physical switch is going to advertise the desire to form a port channel. Then we have the load balancing mode. Now if you remember in previous versions of vSphere, this would have to be route by IP hash. And that basically meant it would look at the source and destination IP address and hash those values. In 5.5, I'll just kind of scroll slowly, you have lots of different options. You can basically use TCP and UDP, which is layer 4 data. You can use the IP address, which is layer 3. Right here, you can use the MAC address, which is layer 2. Or, as you can see here, we can also use the VLAN tag, which is part of the Ethernet 802.1Q. So you have tons of options about how you want to actually do your load balancing. It's going to really depend on what you're putting on the port channel. 
to make sense for you. There's no one right answer. I'm just going to stick with the source and destination IP address because it's what we used to use and whatever. It's just the one I'm going to choose. So we'll click OK. And in a moment, we will now have a new lag called SpongeBob01. It uses two ports, so we can have two network adapters tied into this lag. The mode is active, so it's going to actively reach out to its peer members on the physical switch and ask it to form a port channel. And the VLAN settings will be inherited by the port group that uses the lag. We're not defining it on the, on the lag itself. We're going to let the port group that's using the lag define what VLANs will be available to that port group. So now we need to actually add a host to this switch. I can just go up to the Actions menu here and click Add or Manage Hosts. It's already on Add Host, which is good, and I only have one host to add. So this always kind of confuses me at first. I see I want to add a host and the list is empty. That just means that you have to go to the little button here that says New Hosts and choose a host. In this case, I only have a single host called ESX2. So I'm going to select that host, click OK. And now we see the list has a new host with the new in brackets, or in parentheses rather, and it says ESX2 is connected and ready to go. So we'll click Next. Now I don't have any VM kernel adapters to migrate to this switch, so I'm going to uncheck that. I do, however, want to manage my physical adapters and assign those network adapters to the uplinks for my link aggregation group. So I'm going to leave this checkbox selected. Click Next. And now I want to add my two different network adapters. In this case, I have four available, but the ones that I want to use are VMNIC1 and VMNIC2. I've already determined that those are the two network adapters that are plugged into my upstream switch. So I'm going to click on one and then assign the uplink. And you'll notice there's the usual uplink one and uplink two that you're probably used to seeing. And now we have specific ports for our link aggregation group, port zero and port one. So it gives you the name, which is the SpongeBob 01, and at the end of it, it puts a 0 and 1 to denote port 0 and port two, uh, 1, so the two ports. So I'm going to put uplink 1 on the first port, and I'm going to assign uplink 2 to the second port. And now we can reconfirm that and see that the two SpongeBob link aggregation group ports are now assigned to VMNIC 1 and VMNIC 2. I can click Next. There's no impact to iSCSI, that's fine. Click Next again, and Finish. Now we're adding the host, and during that add process, it's going to map the physical network adapters that are going up to my upstream switch to this link aggregation group. And you could have multiple link aggregation groups. You could have a pair or multiple ports going to one set of switches for production, let's say, another one for maybe a DMZ zone or a web-facing zone, whatever it makes sense for you. You can have many different lags. You're not limited to one like you used to be. Now that that's been added, we need to do some work on the physical switch to actually build the other side of the link aggregation group. Before I do that, however, I'm going to go to my host, and I'm going to look up what ports it's using, using LLDP. So here we can see a list of the physical adapters that are on ESX2. And if I go down to NIC1, I can click on it and I can click LLDP, and it'll let me know, oh, we don't actually have LLDP turned on yet. Give me just one second. We'll go back to the network, and let's actually turn that on. So I'm going to edit this particular switch, and go to Advanced, and we'll change it from Cisco Discovery Protocol, or CDP, to Link Layer Discovery Protocol. And I'm going to set it to both Advertise and Listen. Click OK on that. Let it apply. There we go. Now we can go back to the host and take a look at its information. So I'm going to scroll back down, look at NIC1, go to LLDP, and there we get information that this is attached to module 01, or rather uh, switch 1, module 0, port 6. So now I know that I need to modify port 6, and this one's on port 12. So port 6 and port 12 are the two ports on the physical switch that need to be put into a link aggregation group. So I'll switch over to my HP V1910 switch, and let's go ahead and do that work to form the lag. And this will depend very highly on what kind of switch you're using. This is the switch that's in my lab, so it's what we're going to use.
<laughs> so I'll click on link aggregation. And all I did was I logged into the web platform, clicked on network, and then click on link aggregation. And I already have one lag going to one of my Synology storage arrays, so we're not going to touch that one. And that's aggregation group number one. So let's create a new one called link aggregation group number two. So we'll go through this little wizard. It defaults to the number two because that's the next available number. And we don't want static because that would be just a regular ether channel with no advertisements going back and forth. We want to use dynamic because that will use the link aggregation control protocol. So that tells you a little hint right there saying, hey, LACP is enabled if you choose this option. And that's what we want. So now I'm going to choose port 6 and port 12. I'm going to scroll down just a hair here. And you can see aggregation interface ID number 2 is going to use member ports 6 and 12. And it's dynamic, so we're using LACP. So I can click Apply. Let's go through the process of actually building that interface. And it's pretty much done. There's not a lot to it. We can see now it's kind of hard to see. It's a very dark gray number 2 meaning this interface and this other interface, interface 6 and 12, are now part of the bag or the bonded aggregation of number 2, ID number 2. So now we can go back to the summary, and we can take a look at this actual aggregation group number 2 here. So right now it's telling me off the bat that this is not configured properly. It's not happy about it. There we go. It just takes a little bit of time for the LACP data units to pass back and forth and actually form the link aggregation group. I think it's just the fact that the HP switch, while, while quite robust, is not really meant for, I guess, that kind of enterprise instant on via the web platform. It probably takes a little bit of time for that information to be sent to the web GUI. But if you just click on the button a few times, you'll see that it changes from selected ports to standby ports zero, and that you want to see the reason for being unselected is just a pair of dashes, meaning that they're selected, they're operational, and they're up. So there's a few pieces of house cleaning left. We need to actually set the VLAN tagging on our new lag, or bag as it's called inside of this HP switch. So if I click on VLAN here and go to port detail, we'll see that this port here, this is port 6, but it has the 2 with the underline, meaning that this is lag number 2. And when I click on it, it actually drops down here and says, this is the gigabit ethernet port 106. We'll see that it's currently an access port. Now, prior to making the change of adding the link aggregation group to the HP switch, it was a trunk port and it was passing three different VLANs. However, now it's an access port. And if you look at this port as well, it's also an access port. And the, the actual aggregation group right here, it's right down here. It's hard to find sometimes click on that, we see that it is also an access port as well. Now there's no need to change the individual ports by making changes to the link aggregation group itself. It changes the underlying ports in this switch, but that may not be the behavior on your physical switch. So what I'm going to do over here is go to modify port, and we're going to select the link aggregation group number two, the bag number two. I'm going to change the link type to a trunk, which is right here will allow us to pass multiple VLANs, and I'll apply that change. We'll click Close there. So now that that change has been initiated, I can now tell it which VLANs to tag on the trunk. So I'm going to select the bag number 2 again, tell it what VLANs to tag, and I'm going to do 251 through 253, because those are the VLANs that I need in my environment. I'll click Apply, and there we go. Now if I go back to the port detail, we can verify that these changes have been made the way we want. Click on Port Detail, then I'll click on the BAGG. We can see that the native VLAN or the untagged VLAN is going to be VLAN 1. The three VLANs that we're tagging and passing along are 251 through 253, and that it's a trunk port. And we can verify this with our other ports by clicking on Port 6 and Port 12. And as you can see, by making that change to the link aggregation group, it's also gone ahead and done us the courtesy of changing the underlying interfaces to match. So that's it for the switch. It's now operational. All of the ports are passing the VLANs that we want. They're set to a trunk. You may have a need to make them an access port in a lab, but for most realistic environments, they're going to need to be a trunk. We'll do one last check on our link aggregation group, and we can see that everything is still selected. Nothing is standby, and everything's operational. We now need to switch back to 
the VMware environment one more time. And I've got this port group here, the production VMs VLAN 105. I just made the VLAN number up. Let's let's actually make that a realistic number. So let's make that VLAN number 251. So there we go. Okay, so now the name of the port group, I'm going to select it. Makes more sense. We want to pass VLAN 251 for these production virtual machines using our lag, which is currently not set up. So I've got the port group selected. I'm going to click manage then settings and then we can click this edit right here. If you're feeling lazy you could just go to the actions menu and edit directly from there but I like showing different ways to get to it. Now we need to make some changes to the VLAN ID so I'll click on VLAN. We're going to change the none to VLAN 251 and we're going to go to the teaming and failover and this is something brand new with vSphere 5.5 we can actually see the port group, or the link aggregation group rather, as an object. It's an uplink in and of itself. And it has kind of the universal symbol of two lines with a circle around it, meaning that it's a link aggregation group. So we're gonna drag that with the arrow. We're gonna click the arrow, move it all the way up to the top. And this little red square comes up and says, hey, you can't have a mixture here. That's not supported. You're gonna need to move the other uplinks to unused. And that's fine because if you remember, there's nothing actually bound to uplink one. We bound the physical network adapters to the SpongeBob pork channel. So I'm going to drop down uplink two to unused. And we're going to drop down this other uplink to unused as well. And it's going to say, hey, I don't care what load balancing protocol you use here, what algorithm you use here. We're going to use whatever the algorithm that you chose in the lag for this port group. So you don't even have to change this to the route by IP hash they used to use. The warning is telling you that it's completely worthless and it doesn't really matter. So we've got this configured to use the SpongeBob link aggregation group. Click OK. We've also set the VLAN. And at this point, you're done. You've actually got a port group here. I'm going to click Summary. And it's going to be, there we go, teaming a failover. It's going to be using the active uplink called SpongeBob01. It's not using those physical uplinks anymore. It's not using those independent uplinks. It's using the lag called SpongeBob01. And we can see that it's using VLAN ID 251. It's right there. So at this point, you could put virtual machines on this port group and actually pass traffic across that particular network of VLAN 251. Don't miss out on my future videos. Become a YouTube subscriber today. Do you crave more content on home labs, technical certifications, deep dives, product reviews, and geeky shenanigans? Wall Network is also available in blog format at wallnetwork.com.